Hey guys, Dr. Scott Cleos here, and today we're talking about the loss of smell with the 2019 coronavirus. By now, you've probably heard that a number of people are reporting loss of smell and taste with a SARS-CoV-2 infection. In fact, loss of smell, also known as anosmia, may be the dominant or the only clinical symptom to indicate infection. So much so that some have advocated using a strong odorant like coffee or chocolate or peppermint as a screening tool instead of temperature check before admittance into a public facility. I can tell you the loss is not subtle. At its peak, you literally cannot detect any odors whatsoever. You also lose your ability to taste. Taste and smell are intimately associated. This is most dramatically demonstrated in reptiles like snakes. That darting forked tongue of the snake picks up chemical odorants from the environment. The tongue is then withdrawn into the mouth and inserted into two holes at the roof of the mouth to access a chemoreceptor extension off of the front of the brain called Jacobson's organ. Here, the odorant chemicals on the tip of the snake's tongue are analyzed and interpreted by the brain to let the snake know if there's a potential food source nearby. The same is true in humans minus the darting tongue. So if you can't smell, you can't taste. Interestingly, as things begin to improve, your sense of smell becomes transient. In other words, you may be able to detect a slight odor of chocolate or peppermint, but the sensation quickly fades, a sign that things are getting better, and most people report that their symptoms return to normal in a couple of weeks to a few months, and scientists think they now know why. Inside our nasal cavity, chemical odorants are inhaled and come in contact with the nasal mucosa. The innumerable olfactory receptor neurons in the mucosa can then be stimulated by these chemicals, sending a signal to the olfactory bulb just underneath the frontal lobe of the brain. The signals in the bulb are then relayed to the brain for interpretation via the olfactory tract. All the nerves in our body, including the neurons of the central nervous system, are designed to relay electrochemical signals from one neuron to another across a small space called a synapse. An electric signal is propagated down the axon of one nerve to multiple terminal branches. At the tips of these terminal branches, the electric signal causes small vesicles to burst open, releasing a chemical neurotransmitter into the synapse, which attaches to the receptors on the dendrites of the next neuron, causing the next neuron to fire and propagating the electric signal on down the line. The little hot dog shaped areas along the length of the axon is the myelin sheath, a protein and fatty insulator of the axon that ensures a strong electric signal is propagated all the way to the axon terminals, jumping from small, uninsulated points between the myelin sheath called nodes of Ranvier. The myelin sheath is not part of the nerve itself, but is produced and maintained by small non neural cells in the brain called helper cells or glial cells. In addition to forming the myelin, these helper cells maintain homeostasis and provide support and protection for the local neurons. When the glial cells are damaged, the local neurons no longer function properly. This can be due to a buildup of toxins in the region of cellular damage or a direct loss of the insulating myelin sheath. Without the myelin sheath, the axon no longer conducts efficiently and the weak signal at the axon terminal may not be sufficient to cause vesicular degranulation and neurotransmission. Therefore, the signal never makes it from or to the brain for interpretation. This is what we think happens in diseases such as multiple sclerosis, an autoimmune attack on the glial cells of the brain resulting in demyelination and loss of central nervous system function that can cause temporary weakness, difficulty breathing, or even blindness. Like the neurons in our brain, the olfactory receptors in our nose have helper or glial type cells that maintain the health and function of the local nerve fibers. These are referred to by a number of monikers, including olfactory and sheathing cells, or OECS, olfactory and sheathing glial cells, or olfactory Schwann cells. Researchers have recently discovered that these OECS express the ACE2 surface protein and therefore can be targeted by SARS CoV 2 for infection. Since the nasal cavity is one of the most common routes for pathogen invasion, it shouldn't be a surprise that a good number of patients that are SARS-CoV-2 positive report anosmia as a dominant or possibly the only presenting symptom. The good news is that, since the nerves themselves are not damaged, loss of smell and taste is almost always temporary. As the damaged glial cells in the nasal cavity recover or are replaced, you may be able to faintly detect some odors, but the sensation quickly fades, a good sign that things are improving. 
As more help or cells are produced, your sense of smell will improve accordingly. So don't panic. Most of you will be able to smell that cup of coffee again in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching and stay safe.